Today I want to talk to you about my first book, The Witch's Daughter. Now, it's easy to think when you see a book on the New York Times bestseller list and you think it's everywhere and the writer is living a wild and wonderful life on the proceeds, that this all happened overnight and that now you never have to worry about getting books published again or where your next meal is coming from. And I'm here to tell you it's not quite true. Um, but first of all, before we get into what my life as a writer is like now, I wanted to tell you a bit about what it was like for me when I was pre-published. And I like to think of it as pre-published rather than unpublished. I think it's, I think it's helpful. Um, I had been writing for a long time before I got the contract for my first piece of long-form fiction. I'd had short stories published. I'd had pieces accepted for non-fiction anthologies. I'd been shortlisted for a couple of competitions for, for new writers. But that moment of getting a publishing contract for my first novel was a long time coming. Um, actually, from the moment when I said, OK, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all out for my writing career, I am going to be a writer, from that moment until the day when I signed a contract for my first novel was nine years nine years. Um, it's a long time to battle with that strange thing a writer has, which is total self-belief in yourself and what you're doing, and crippling self-doubt, which tells you it's never going to happen and you're wasting your time. And we are weird creatures, writers. Those two states can exist inside us at the same time. And I think really what happens is the people who succeed are the ones who just keep going for nine years if necessary and don't lose the faith and and of course along the way things happen you get as I say short stories very good route to to building up your publishing CV you need to show that you can produce work um, to a publishable level that you can sell it that your work is marketable that you can finish things um, and short stories and, and submissions for anthologies brilliant way to do that competitions I did all those sort of things I also um took a creative writing master's degree with Lancaster University and I was very lucky in that this particular university runs a distance learning course because I had one small baby when I started and another one by the time I'd finished so it wouldn't have been easy living in Wales to get to a full-time um, postgraduate degree program and while I was doing my MA I was lucky enough to acquire an agent and that felt huge. That felt, OK, now, now things will start to happen. And she was very lovely and we had some wonderful lunches and I was with her for two years. And she never sold a word I wrote. And, and I don't think it was anybody's fault. I think it was just the way things often are. So what happened was she took me on because of the book I was writing for my MA, um, which was a comic novel. And she tried to place that for me once I'd finished it. <clears throat> and uh, she didn't manage to. And she said comedies were difficult to place and maybe I could try something a little bit more commercial. Um, and I then wrote uh, what later became Lamp Black Wolf Grey, which has been published. Um, but at the time, she couldn't find a, a, a publisher for that. And, and looking back, I think it wasn't ready. I did a lot of work on it when we picked it up for publication later on. And I think it wasn't as good as it needed to be. So another year went by. That's two books two years of writing, and uh, she said, well, did you know, have you got something else? I thought, well, I'll, I'll have another go. So I sat down and I wrote what I then called The Book of Shadows, which was later renamed The Witch's Daughter. And I wrote, I suppose, quite a long, fluffy draft, but it was, it was all there, and I sent it to her, my agent, and she took six weeks to get back to me, which is not uncommon, and she sent me a two-line email, the gist of which is, or was, it's a bit bitty. So as you can imagine, it was difficult to know what to do after that. And I thought, this isn't working. I need to take back control of my own work. So I actually sacked my agent, which was a very difficult thing to do at the time, um, because I really felt like I might be cutting myself off from being able to submit my work to publishers. I mean, it, it, it is something that 
we'll come back to is whether or not you need an agent and whether or not you can manage without an agent. Anyway, at that point, I needed to take control of my own work again. So the agent and I very amicably parted ways. And I worked on the novel again for a little bit longer and then I submitted it myself to small presses as the Book of Shadows and it was published by a company called Snow Books who have a wonderful open submissions policy. There are very small publishers but they care passionately about each book they put out. It was a great way to get started and they produced the book beautifully and they put it out. Um, and really that could have been sort of how my life was going to be then with small books going out with small publishers and having to keep my day job um, which by then I was I was teaching creative writing as well I was running workshops and starting to do visiting lecture work at the local university but still of course I wanted to spend more time writing and then my book was picked up by <coughs> my editor Peter Wolverton at Thomas Dunn the imprint of St Martin's Press in New York and we worked on the book for a year, we came up with a new title, they made me this lovely new cover. Um, we changed quite a lot of the book and we put it out as a hardback and an ebook. And ebooks then were pretty new, we're going back to 2010, dark days when ebooks were barely heard of, but it was beginning and it made a big difference. There was, seemed to be a market for these sort of books of an ebook. And the book did reasonably well, and a year later it came out in paperback. And by then I'd written a second book for um, Thomas Dunn. And then something really strange happened. The following Christmas, the book um, got on the New York Times bestseller list. And it's still a little mystery. If we knew exactly how we'd done it, we'd do it again. Um, it stayed there for several weeks. It was on two of the lists, the ebook and the, the print version. And this is why probably you may have heard of The Witch's Daughter. This is the one that allowed me to really concentrate on my writing. So this this little book's very important to me. It was the book that made me take control of my own writing career. It was the book that made me say, I am going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep going and have some belief in the book and the story. And then that belief was rewarded by other people seeing that it had maybe something that people would enjoy. So that was how I came to have my first successful book. And I will be telling you more about the other books and how they led on from this one and what happened next. Oh.